welcome back to my channel. So this channel really grew because of a video on Potter's Pink. And so I decided that in this new year, I want to look at some other colors that are sort of in a similar style to Potter's Pink in the fact that they're sort of workhorses in a palette. And so I decided to start with sap green, mainly because there are so many variations of sap green. And depending on the brand, you are going to get totally different pigments used in the mixes. So as you can see, I've pulled all the colors used in the mixes here and you've got yellows, you've got a blue, you've got oranges, but you've also got one of these that uses a magenta. <laughs> and so I think breaking it down and looking at how these are created, we're starting with five. I've actually got six sap greens of my own palette and two that I've pulled from my mom's palette. And so I've got a good selection of sap greens. In this video, we're gonna look at five because I think if I did all eight, this is going to be a very long video. So I'm gonna start by labeling this page and then we're gonna get into looking at what all the colors are. So this page is now labeled and you can see what all the different pigments are. I made a bit of a mistake up here. This is PY154 and it labeled as PY145. So I fixed it. And as always, I will leave all the like colors I've used to mix in the description. On this sheet, they're just labeled with the pigment number. It makes it too busy to put everything on this page. As you can see, like it's pretty, it's a pretty sap green. I will say, sap green is one of the colors that I'm totally okay with all the variation that exists in it because it means that like I get to try out a whole bunch of different colors. So this one is so much brighter. It's like electric green. It's not tiny fan that likes to jump around. But it is bright compared to almost all of the other ones I have. I think there might be one other one that's bright like this, but nothing that's as bright. Windsor Newton is sort of in the middle, I would say. It's bright, but it's not as sort of fluorescent as the Holbein one. Rosa Galleries, I'm still not sure how I feel about their colors, and their sap green is very emerald. I find most of their colors too opaque for what I'd consider like traditional watercolor. They're nice, like they're nice in other applications. So their sap green, on the other hand, is very emerald and very bright, but like differently bright than the Holbein. The Holbein's bright like fresh grass bright. The Rosa Gallery sap green sort of reminds me of like pine trees in the spring when they're getting their fresh little buds. I don't actually have the Roman small one in my palette. It's mom's. <laughs> I borrowed it for this um, because I think theirs is actually pretty nice. It's one that I have considered adding. Like it falls brightness wise, like in this sort of zone, but it also sort of has like the moodiness of the Jacksons, which I do enjoy. I would say that the Jacksons, is the Jacksons the darkest sap green I have, or is there one? There might be one from a handmade brand that's like slightly darker than the Jacksons, but for the most part, I think the Jacksons is like the darkest standardly available sap green I have. So for mixing, it's pretty simple for the most part. This first one is I'm gonna ditch all these pans. Just 
just see that I've got a bit more mixing space. Yeah. We are going to start with the Jacksons, which is a mix of PY 150. Oh, PY 154. So this. And I chose French Ultramarine because it didn't seem to have a whole bunch of granulation to it. Mm -hmm. I think I might still be too yellow. It's a very pretty green, but it is still too yellow. I will say that mixing greens is... I struggle with mixing grays. Mixing greens is not... I would rather just buy a green that I like and not have to mix rather than to mix for greens. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty similar. So next up we have Nickel Azo Yellow from Roman Small which I don't know that I've used in any full pieces. I specifically bought it for this video and maybe a mix and graze video. It was bought for a mixing video. So, and then we have Thalo Seam Green from Michael Wilcox. Okay. Oh yeah, like I can see how that gets the brightness. And then we've got a, it's got a touch of pink in it apparently. I'm going to start quite small with the amount of pink. And I even think that was too much, potentially. We'll see. Uh, let's see how that dries down. I think it still might be too much. Well, honestly, I didn't think the Jackson's one was going to be the easiest and that this was what was going to trip me up. Well, let's see how that dries down. That might be it. Now we've got PG26, which as a base green is not a green I ever use. It's only a green I use in mixes. And Schmincke Yellow Orange. Again, bought because an orange I really liked was out of stock everywhere. Not a color I actually reach for all that often. It's a color I wish I loved. Oh, nope. We've like barely toned that color at all. One thing that I think is really interesting is that there are so many different ways to end up with the color that we call sap green. Because like I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't think of adding pink 
there and getting what we call sap green. And it's the only one that I've got in my palette. But I also have one that uses quinacridone burnt orange to get the sap green. Still too bright. I've got that down too much. Let's see. Again, I didn't think that full bind was going to be the hardest one to do. Rosa Galleries is Schmincke Yellow Orange as its base. Michael Wilcox, is our green. And then PPK. All right. This is too dark. I already know this is too dark. Yeah. Does it fill my moody green's heart with joy? Yes. Is it what we're going for? Not at all. So, we are going to add in more orange. That might not be that far off. A black where the black isn't mauled in is always going to give you some more granulation than like this has. This doesn't have any granulation. This is always going to have some. But overall, like the funny thing is there are some of these mixes. So. We are going to add in more orange. And that might not be that far off. A black where the black isn't mauled in is always going to give you some more granulation than like this has. This doesn't have any granulation. This is always going to have some. Finally, we have Roman Small, which is PG7. And Nicolazo Yellow. Get it in one. I got this in one. I'm gonna be really happy. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get any of these in one. There are lots of these greens that I've created accidentally that I potentially like more than their actual colors. Um, these like Holbein mixes, I love. This one really reminds me of Dirty Yellow from Thirty One Purple Fish. Like, there are great colors that I've accidentally created that I wasn't trying to, which I think is one of the really fun parts about these mixing videos. So I will leave all of these colors and which specific versions they were down in the description. It just makes this page a bit too busy to have their full names on this page as well. And so I'm... Just gonna swatch them out because I think it's interesting to see like what colors make up 
our favorite mixes. And in this case, sap green is such a fun one to look at because every mix uses different colors. So even if you've got one in your palette that you don't love, like you might try a different version that you absolutely love. I'm shocked that I got that in one. I guess it only took three for Windsor Newton. I'm actually pretty happy with them all. Um, there's a little bit more texture to this one, but that's because of the lamp black. And like, there's always gonna be that texture there unless the black is directly mauled into it. Everything else though is pretty spot on. I love these. They're not Holbein Sap Green, but I love them and I love this, which isn't surprising because I've got it in my palette from a different brand. So. Thanks for watching the Sap Green part one. Let me know if you want to see a part two. I already have some brands for a part two, but if there's any specific brand you'd like to see included, let me know below because I'm always willing to add more colors to my palette. <laughs> Adding more paints to my palette is never the problem. Deciding which new ones to add is often the problem. So if there's a specific sap green you'd like to see in part two, let me know. I hope you enjoyed watching. Were there any mixes that surprised you? I think I'm always surprised when there are pinks and greens mixes. Like it shouldn't surprise me as much as it does, but it does.